Hey, it's me Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. Today we're going to do awesome science with Orbix Hot Glass here at Lookout Mountain, Alabama. Goggle up. Science is about to happen. We're going to use a high-speed camera and learn about Prince Rupert's drop. It's never been done on the internet. You're going to learn something. Let's go. Okay, we are here inside the shop with Cal. Cal owns the place. Can you show me how to make a Prince Rupert's drop? Sure. Gonna gather some glass, drop it in a bucket of cold water. Cold water. So after it cools down, this is what you're left with. It kinda looks like a tadpole, but it has some really interesting mechanical properties. We can actually hit this thing with a hammer and it won't break. Okay, I'm ready. Didn't go. Okay, I think Cal is kind of a pansy, so I, you think you can break it? <laughs> so we're gonna try again, only this time I'm gonna make him hit it really hard and I'm gonna record it with high speed. Does that work? Think you can break it? All right, break it. let's do it. The challenge is on. Can just hit it? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> so do you think you actually broke it? I don't think you did. You think you broke it? I know I broke it. <laughs> let's look at the high speed. Okay, so the drop broke, but technically it wasn't the hammer that broke it. If you look close in the high speed, you can see that it's the wiggling of the tail that makes it go. This is the mystery of the Prince Rupert's drop. You can try as hard as you can to break the bowl, but you can't. But if you even nick the tail, the entire thing will explode. Not shatter, but actually explode. Let's go outside and I'll show you more. Okay, we're gonna just run an obscene frame rate here. We have this Phantom V1610. So glass breaking occurs so fast that you have to have like hundreds of thousands of frames per second. So we're gonna have a lower resolution and we have to have a lot of light as well. We're also gonna use this mirror over here to run about 3,000 frames per second so we can get a wide shot to see the whole event as well. Three, two, Now we understand what a Prince Rupert drop does, but at this point we don't quite understand why it does it. Let's take a closer look. Okay, this is called a polariscope, and basically what it is is it's a filtered piece of glass that's polarized. Now I have another filter here. You can see if I turn it, then I can block out the light. Now if I put this on the camera that you're looking through here, and then I put the Prince Rupert drop in between the two pieces of glass, you should be able to see the internal stresses built up inside the Prince Rupert drop. So to understand how these stresses got here, let's use the color gray to represent nice and strong solid glass. We'll use red to represent molten glass, and because of the thermal expansion coefficient, it's safe to assume that the higher the temperature, the larger this glass wants to be. Blue represents glass that's cooling off, or transitioning between the two states. Because of that same thermal expansion coefficient, this glass is shrinking and basically pulling in on itself. Think of a Prince Rupert's drop as a bunch of little infinitesimal pieces of glass with each piece trying to interact with the pieces around it. When the molten glass is first dripped into the water, the outside layer touches the water and immediately solidifies. This locks in that outside shape of the drop. The inside of the drop, however, is still a hot expanded liquid. As heat's transferred to the water, that glass on the inside slowly begins to cool down and pulls in against that outside layer. The problem is that because it's already locked in as a round solid, it only compresses tighter against itself. This actually makes it stronger, kind of like how an arch compresses and gets stronger when you put your weight on it, only this is in all directions. Now because the cooling glass can't move that outside layer, it begins to pull against itself, causing it to be in extremely high tension. It then hardens in this state of tension, and there you have it, a Prince Rupert's drop. The outside is an extremely high compressive stress, and the inside is an extremely high tensile stress. If one link in this tension chain is ever cut, it breaks on down the line, feeding off of its own stored up energy just like a chemical explosive does. The difference here is that instead of releasing chemical potential energy, mechanical strain energy is released. This wave of energy is what we call a failure front. You can directly measure the velocity of that failure front as long as you have a camera fast enough. 
Let's give it a shot at 130,000 frames per second. Three, two, one, go. Got it? So a big thanks to Cal from Orbix Hot Glass. If you found this interesting and you want to support him by buying stuff, go click on the link wherever I put it and uh, go check out his website. Click the cat to subscribe with the helmet. <laughs> it's a sad looking cat. You've never caught the cat on fire, ever. Never. Not even once. Never. These things are named for a guy named Prince Rupert, imagine that, who lived in Bavaria back in the 1600s. Here, here. <laughs> he brought these over as a gift to King Charles II in England who gave them to his royal society to try to figure out. Yep, ready. Whoa, holy smokes. <laughs> Tension's killing me. You know what blowed, blowed up? Yep, it blowed up. It blowed up, y'all. <laughs>